Hey guys, and welcome back. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can use Google Sheets to run kind of a database for our Python files. This is super easy, pretty quick and completely free. Uh, so hopefully you guys can follow along and just make sure you're paying attention to the steps closely because there is quite a few. And if you mess one up, you might run into some issues. Okay, so our first step is to just create some kind of spreadsheet on any of your Google accounts and give it an appropriate name, something that's easy to remember. So I just named mine tutorial and I just filled it with a few random entries but it doesn't have to have anything in it. Next, we're gonna to go to this console.cloud.google.com. Now you can simply find that by just typing like Google Cloud Console on Google and it should bring up a page that looks like this. Now for you, it probably says something like create new project. So what we're actually gonna do is, well, create a new project. For me, since I've already have some previous projects, I just have to go up here, click on new project, and then wait till it brings me to a page like this. So I'm just gonna name my project um, like test uh, let's say test sheets. Okay. And for organization, you can just leave that blank. So I'm going to click create and I got some error here, but it is actually creating the thing, uh, the project up here. So once it's created, we should just be able to click on it or it should actually just bring it up for you guys. And it should bring us to a page that looks something like this. So you can find them just by going up here or by clicking the other way that I just did. Anyways, what we need to do now is download some APIs for this project. So we're going to go to go to API overview, or you can click on this little link on the side and go APIs and services. So we'll do that. And we're going to get two different APIs. So the first one we need is Google drive. So we're simply just going to search uh, Google drive like this. And well, I guess that doesn't work. So we're going to go to library and search Google drive. Okay. So we're going to click this one and we're going to click enable. And now, now we're going to start setting up some credentials for it. And then we're going to install the uh, Google Sheets API. So we're going to click create credentials. We're going to go to uh, Google Drive API. We're going to select web server. So Node.js or Tomcat. And then we're going to go application data and click no. We'll click on the little blue button here and we'll give this some kind of name. In my case, I'm just going to name it Tim. And then as a role, we're going to go project editor. We'll make sure JSON is selected and we'll click continue. And we're going to download a JSON file now, which will store our credentials. So you can see it's downloading this uh, file for me now. And we'll just click close. And now we're going to go back to our library and get another API. So we're going to go to now to Google Sheets. We're going to go Google Sheets API and we're going to click enable. Wait for this to enable, and that should actually be about all we need to do. And now we're ready to move on to uh, what do you call it? Actually, hooking up some stuff with our code. Okay, so that's it for this kind of Google Cloud platform. Just make sure you keep track of where this JSON file is because we are actually going to have to open that up now. So, what I'm going to do to open this file is just use PyCharm, and I'm just going to create a new project and throw my JSON file in there. You guys can use whatever you want, but just open up the JSON file with the text editor so that you uh, well, can see what's inside of it because that's important. So, I'm just going to create a new a project on my desktop called Tutorial. And all I'm going to do now is just grab this JSON file that I had here, and I'm going to drag it into this folder. And I'm just going to call this creds just because we're going to have to type the name in later. So it'd be easier to name it that. Okay. So what we're looking for now is this client email. We're going to copy this client email from inside our JSON file. We're going to go to our Google sheets here. We're going to go to share and we're simply going to paste this email in and just click send. This is going to allow us access to the Google sheet from our API. Okay. So that's about it. We're going to leave the Google sheet open because we're going to play with it in a bit, but we'll go back to PyCharm now. And what we're going to do is create a Python file. So new, Python file, and I'm just going to call this uh, sheets. Okay. Now in here, what we're going to have to do actually is we're not writing any code yet. We have to install two uh, packages or modules with pip so that we can actually use the API. So to do that in PyCharm, we can just open up the terminal here, or we can go to command prompt and start typing the following. I'm just going to do pip install g spread and then o so o auth to client. Once you're done that, you're going to hit enter. And for you, it should actually download quite a few things. But for me, since I already have it installed, it's not bothering to do that. So pip install G spread and then OAuth to client. Okay. Once you've done that, what we're going to do is inside our Python file, we're going to import a few modules and just make sure everything's working. So the first one to import is G spread. And the second is from uh, OAuth to client dot service account. We're going to import service account credentials. 
So now I'm just going to create a configuration for my file. It's going to go to Python, just call this run and select my script. And then we're going to run this and make sure that everything's working. Again, you guys can do this in whatever Python editor you want, as long as you know how to just run the Python script. Okay. So I'm going to run this and no errors. So we're good to go and we're ready to actually start connecting to our Google sheet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually, and you guys are going to have to copy this from the description, unless you want to type it out with me, we're going to create a scope. Now, usually you just put one string in here, but I was running into a lot of issues with that. So I found that the best way to fix this, and it'll probably work for you guys is to put all four of these. Um, so these are the four strings in case for some reason you don't want to copy it, um, but it will be in the description and under the source code link, it'll be on my website as well. So you can just copy the string in really nice. Um, we're going to copy all of these in and then we're going to go to the next line. Uh, I guess I should have clicked enter here and we'll start setting up our credentials. So now what we're going to do actually is I got to open up my other file here. So we're going to say cred equals and then we're going to say service account credentials dot from JSON key file name. And then in here, what we're going to do is put the name of our JSON file, which is creds dot JSON. We're going to do a comma and then we're going to put scope and this should refer to the variable that we just created up here. The next thing to do is say uh, client equals G spread dot authorize. And then here we're going to put creds and that's almost about it for actually um, hooking up to our sheet. So now the next thing we have to do is just say sheet is equal to client dot and I believe it is open. Yeah, it is open. And then in here we're going to put the name of our sheet, which is tutorial and then just put dot sheet one. And this will just make sure we're getting the first sheet. Clearly, if you had sheet two or sheet three, then you guys could probably figure out how to get that. So let's actually just try running this first and make sure that everything's working before we move too far. So we're going to run this and just wait to see if we get any output and we don't get anything, which actually means that everything's working. So now we can try to print out the contents of our sheet. So remember that my sheet looks like this. So we have kind of three columns and six rows. So what we're going to do is just say data equals sheet dot get all records. And then we can just simply print out data. So let's run that and just wait a second. And you can see that we're printing all of the data from our sheet out here. And it does actually correspond obviously to what is on the Google sheet. So already that's pretty interesting and pretty cool. Now, if you want to make things print a little bit nicer, what you can just do is import or actually we'll do this from PP print import PP print, which just stands for like pretty print. So if we do PP print like this, then our data will be formatted a bit nicer when it comes out. So you can see it's just in its own rows. So it's nicer to see. Okay. So now it's time to talk about how we can get certain rows and certain columns. So from our spreadsheet, say we wanted to just get the first row or the first column. Uh, it's really easy to do that. So what we're going to do is we can just say row equals and then sheet dot get, uh, actually, isn't that what it is? One second. I gotta have a look at here. Ah, sheet dot row underscore values. And then here we'll just put the row. So let's say I want to get row three, I'll put row three. And then instead of printing data, we'll print row and I'll show you what we get. So wait a second, we get two bill and blue, which corresponds to what's on our sheet, which is two bill and blue. So that's row number three. Now for a column, it's very similar. All we have to do is we'll copy this actually, and we'll change wherever it says row to column. So sh so call dot value, I believe is what it is. And now we can just print out column and this will actually give us the third column in our sheet, which is exactly wait for it. Fave color, red, blue, orange, pink, yellow. Awesome. So if we want to get a specific cell, the way that we can do that is we could say cell equals sheet dot. And then I believe it is actually just cell. And in here, we'll just put the uh, coordinates for it. So I could do cell one, two. And then dot, I believe it's value. Yeah, dot value. So now I can just print cell out. And if we're corresponding to cell one, two, well, that should be, what am I confused here? I think that should be this. So we'll see what we get. And wait a second. And indeed, oh, we get names. So I guess I was confused on what one, two is. Ah, one, two would be that. Okay. So yeah, that is essentially uh, how that works in terms of getting stuff. So now I'll show you how we can insert rows, uh, insert columns, and yeah, just do a bunch of cool stuff like that. So if we want to insert an entire row, what we can do is we can say, uh, let's, let's make a list that is going to be everything that's contained in that row. So we'll say insert row is equal to, and then here we'll say like, hello, five, red, blue. 
and this is going to be the contents of our row so each column is be one of the items in our list here and then what we can simply do is just say sheet dot insert row will give it the row and then we'll just define what row we want to insert it at so let's say we want to insert it at row four which should be right here well let's run this and see what happens to our google sheet Okay, so I have this open here and you should actually see that it updates and it does. We are inserting to bill blue. Now notice that it doesn't actually override the other row. It just pushes everything down. Um, and that's honestly kind of a nice thing because a lot of times we don't want to override. We just want to insert at that index, right? So if we want to actually change rows or delete rows, I'll show you how we can delete a row. So it's very similar to insert row, except we don't need the contents. We just need the index. So if I delete row four, run that open up my sheet you can see that row four will disappear and row four is gone everything shifts up one now if i want to actually update a row or update a uh, a cell per se what i can do is i can do something like update and then we'll do cell and then here i just have to do the coordinates of the cell so let's do two two and then whatever i want to change it to in this case i'll just say changed like that Let's run this and let's go to our sheet and watch what happens. So two, two, and you can see that we changed that to change. And that is how you update uh, the cell. Now there's a ton of other things you can do with this. Uh, I recommend you guys read the documentation for this API, which I will again have on my website and in the description. Uh, but one last thing I guess that you can do is get like the amount of rows and the amount of columns and all that. And to do that, you can just say like, uh, let's say num rows, oh, I guess that should be the other case is equal to sheet dot I think it's uh, rows oh row count yeah that's how you do that and then if we were to print num rows obviously it would tell me how many rows I have so let's wait for that and you can see we get a thousand rows and that's obviously because this sheet actually just goes down to uh, a thousand right if you want to see how many rows actually have content in it what you would do is just get the length of this data so if I could want to do that I could just say len of data and then you should see that we're only getting six, I believe. Um, we'll see though in a second, a oh, five, yeah. So because we only have one, two, or one, two, three, four, five, uh, that's why it's giving us five. So anyways, that has been it for how to use the Google Sheets kind of API and use that as a database. With just this knowledge alone, you guys should be able to do some pretty cool stuff. And if you know how to update a cell, essentially you know how to update row, you know how to update um, columns, you know how to do all that. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel.